Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I saw this and thought I would take a screenshot of it just to kind of make a point here because this is something you see with a lot of fairly new lifters that have less than a, a year or two of experience under their belt. They see their noob gains and they make this massive mistake that their noob gains are going to continue forever, that maybe they're just going to decrease a little bit, that if, you know, they could put on 20 pounds in the first year that they're going to put on 15 the next and then 10 the next or in 10 the year after and guys it doesn't work that way if, if people were able to gain that much muscle in four or five years uh, you would have guys who look like the 90s bodybuilders all the the ifbb pros in terms of actual size muscle mass and everything in their first three to five years of training completely natural that's what you would actually see that's not the reality so when i say that most people are going to gain 20 to 30 pounds of pure muscle is going to be pretty much the upper threshold uh, drug free for people over their training career it's because you see massively diminished returns so back to this poster 15 pounds of muscle gained in less than a year doesn't mean that they're going to actually gain 30 over the course of their training career because again it's going to slow way down it's going to slow down tremendously plus what oftentimes happens is that people don't realize that their 15 pounds isn't actually all muscle gain usually if they're gaining weight particularly if you're gaining weight fairly rapidly oftentimes what happens because the muscles stretch over fat a little more your muscles get fuller they fill up with triglycerides, which are also fat, and that will show on a DEXA scan, uh, which is intramuscular fat, glycogen, everything else that ends up happening. Sometimes your 15 pound muscle gain might have actually only been 11 or 12 pounds of muscle gain. Now, that might sound like a small point because you know your body fat percentage can go down. You start talking about 10 or more pounds of muscle gain, your body fat percentage can actually go down even if you've gained a couple pounds of fat. If you guys go do the math sometimes, if you check the percentage, your actual body composition will have improved in spite of fat gain. So if that's the case, out of your 15 pounds towards say your 20 to 30 pound lifetime limit, you really only can count 12 pounds of that towards it. And so that's one of the things where people mess up a lot. And uh, again, watch my other material on this guys. I've, I've made other material, I've got links to it. I think even in that video, which I'll link down below, which this guy was responding to. People need to keep in mind, I'm talking about people starting at a healthy point. The people who can absolutely break this rule are people who've been like anorexics, people coming back from a wasting disease, people who are very, very underweight, so they don't have a normal amount of muscle mass for someone who doesn't lift. Those people will obviously be able to exceed the limits because they started with less than they were supposed to have under ideal conditions. So we're talking about people starting fresh who are, are actually pretty healthy. They haven't suffered any dramatic weight loss or not an under eater or anything. So I'm not talking about uh, everyone. And the same thing with people who start who aren't done growing yet. Obviously, if you still have two inches of height left to gain because you're in your late teens and you're a male, you're going to gain more than 20 pounds of lean mass. Actually, you would probably gain at least another five pounds of weight that is completely lean. It'll be bone, muscle, everything else without even working out from that point. So when you start factoring things like that in, it, it gets hard to tell. So remember, when we talk about these lifetime gains, we're talking about people who are done growing, they're healthy adult males from their starting point. So there's going to be exceptions. And uh, it really isn't indicative, though, of what you gain in your first six months or your first year. Please don't let that confuse you as to what's going to happen for the lifetime of training. If you do it correctly and you're on a solid training program and you do everything right, there is no reason that your first year of training that you can't reach or exceed half of the muscle that you're going to gain for the rest of your life is a drug-free lifter and that's the take-home message there it's not you shouldn't look at that as a depressing thing you should look at that as that first year of work if you do it right is going to pay off amazingly well and i would recommend to people if your goal is to stay natural because you're you're doing this purely for true fitness purposes not for other purposes not for your vanity not for anything else you're doing it because you want to be fit and healthy and so you choose to stay completely clean that's okay put that in perspective then take that same mindset going into it that not that oh it's terrible that i'll gain over half if not most of my lifetime gains drug free well that sucks no look at it a different way that that first year of work if you do it right is going to pay off massively it's going to put you over halfway where you're ever going to be and so look at it from a positive perspective instead of a negative one and put it in perspective like that all right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to click like down below. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.